We thank you for how you have helped us throughout the day. And already by the grace of God, we have come to your presence to be empowered and refreshed once again. We pray that your word will encourage us, will refresh Amen. us, will elevate us to the place you want us to be. Amen. Our eyes tonight. Amen. Lord, because we know you've answered. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Tonight, we are looking at the message, A New Season in Jericho. In 2 Kings chapter 2, I read from verse 18. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 18. And when they came again to him, for he tarried at Jericho, he said unto them, Did I not say unto you, Go not? And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee. The situation of this, of this city is pleasant as my Lord seeth, but the water is not, and the ground is barren. And he said, bring me a new cruise, and put salt therein. And they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the spring of the waters, and cast the salt in there, and said, thus said the Lord, I have healed these waters that shall not be there. There shall not be from this any more death or barren land. So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha, which he spake. This passage, as we're looking at it, is uh, we're talking about the city Jericho. Jericho as a city, they had been managing to move on despite the challenging situation of the city. The city, when you look at it, in fact, Jericho in ancient time was called the city of palm trees. Very beautiful physically. And they said, you see that, you know, the city is pleasant, it's beautiful, but our water has been poisoned. The land is barren. We are walking, but we are not getting increase. We are drinking, but more of, you know, the water is doing us more havoc than good. He said, even though you look at it superficially, the city seemed to be very pleasant and okay, but they said, deep down, it's not at all. And they've been managing, they've been living in that situation, managing the barrenness of the land and the poisonousness of the water. But something brought a change. And you know, in any life, that's what always happens. Something can bring a change. Jericho had been there for many years. This situation had been there for many years. But when a change came, everything altered. And many times, some of us, our lives are like Jericho. When people look at you from outside, they envy you. They look at your life. In fact, some people are praying and saying, oh God, let my life be like the life of this brother. Let my life be like the life of this sister. Let my life be like the life of this family. And even when they are saying it, you are saying, these ones don't know. They just see everything rosy from outside. If they only know what I'm going through. It's like Jericho, pleasant physically on the outside. But the people living there said, it's a different story. It's barren, we are walking, but we are not getting anything. The water is poisoned, we are drinking it, we are using it, but it's causing us harm. Say, but the, the, the city looks beautiful. Yes, 
Many lives are like that sometimes. Outside, everything looks beautiful, but inside, there are burdens, there are challenges. And people are saying, oh God, help me. Tonight, help is coming. Amen. As Jericho received a new season, you will receive a new season in Jesus' name. Amen. The arrival of prophet Elisha with a new anointing ushered Jericho into a new season of deliverance and dominion. Just Elisha coming, he had just received the double portion. Elijah, Elijah has just gone. He has just picked up the mantle of Elijah. And this was the first place he got to after crossing River Jordan to the other side, you know, after he received the mantle. After that, he got into Jericho. And the first miracle he did, he changed the situation of that particular city. Elijah was a new arrival, a new arrival with a new anointing, a new anointing in a new season. And when you have all that, there has to be changes. Yeah. There must be alterations. There has to be progress. And I'm praying that tonight will be a new season for you. Amen. A new season of progress. Amen. A new season of change. Amen. A new season of upliftment. Amen. A new season of deliverance and dominion. Amen. You know, in our guy's time, these people have been suffering. They were working, but they were not getting any increase. They were eating, they were not being filled. They were wearing clothes, they were not getting warm. They were earning wages. It's like putting it into a pocket that has holes. The wages were just leaking away. But a new season came and God said, from this day, will I bless you. That's a new season. So in Agar's time, a new season of favor, a new season of blessing, a new season of fullness followed the old season of discipline, poverty, and deprivation. You can read that in Agar chapter one. It was an old season where poverty, deprivation, discipline, but when they repented and they obeyed and they did what God wanted them to do, God told them, from this day, will I bless you? Is the seed even in the man? In fact, look ahead, look ahead, look ahead. Harvest is already coming. That's what God told them. It was followed by a new season. And if you look at even in the Bible, the Old Testament is like the old season. And believers in the New Testament, we are in the new season. And I'm praying that you will partake of that new season of Amen. blessing, of dominion, Amen. of increase, of, Amen. of deliverance, Amen. of in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, what we receive in the new season should be much more than the people in the old season received. You know, in the old season, the Holy Ghost used to come upon them when they needed to prophesy. They, they didn't have a permanent abiding of the Holy Ghost. No. Anytime God wants to use them to prophesy, Holy Ghost will come upon them, they'll prophesy, and the Holy Ghost will go. But Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will abide with you. It's a new season. We should get much more than them. So as a believer, you know, many times we want to go back to the Old Testament. I'm happy and glad that I'm living in the New Testament, in the New Testament of grace. The Bible says the law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Because it's a new season. Moses represents the old season. Elijah represents the old season. But Jesus represents the new season. And there is more victory, higher blessings, more progress that can be made in the new season. And I pray that you will be a partaker in the new season in Jesus' name. Amen. We look at the first point, new anointing for a new season. But we're going to look at three things tonight, new anointing for a new season. Then we look at the noble arrival in a new season. And we look at the new accomplishments in the new season. New anointing for a new season. 
Elijah the prophet had been the main player in the old season. I will praise God for the many miracles experienced in the old season. You remember Elijah, a lot of miracles happened during his time. And we thank God for those miracles. But the day came for Elijah to go. And Elijah started his journey. And he went to Bethel. He went to Gilgal. He went to Jericho. And then he went to Jordan. And he was taken away. Elijah passed through Jericho on the last day he was going. He passed through Jericho. And that would not be the first time Elijah was getting to Jericho during his prophetic ministry. He would have gone to Jericho many times. They were asking, but why did Jericho remain in their problem? We are not told in the scriptures. Okay, the last day Elijah was going, was it not a possibility for these people to be free from their bondage? We are not told in the scriptures. Why did they remain in their bondage even with the prophet choosing to pass through Jericho as one of the cities before he, he left, we don't know. But what the scripture tells us is that Elijah went and Jericho remained in their bondage. I pray that, you know, power will not pass you, anointing will not pass you, Amen. and you remain in your bondage. Amen. It's, it's, it's really terrible. How can Elijah pass through that place and they remain in their bondage? And the man had gone. Thank God for Elijah receiving, Elijah receiving the, 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 the mantle that fell from Elijah. He would have taken that mantle away. He didn't need it in heaven, but he would have taken the mantle away. And it was that mantle that Elijah, you know, received the double portion that he now came to use to solve their problem. But that problem could have been solved while Elijah was here. So Elijah passed through Jericho on his last trip before his exit. But the problems of Jericho persisted. It's a tragedy. And you know, every time I read this passage, I'm, I'm puzzled. How can a prophet with anointing, with power, ready to help them, how can he pass through their midst and they remain in their bondage? Are we going to blame Elijah? I don't think so. What exactly was the problem? We are not told. We can only guess. We can only surmise. We can only maybe say, uh, just uh, uh, say maybe it's because of this or it's because of that or it's because of that. But we are not specifically told. But at least we can see Elijah went through Jericho. Jericho remained in their problem. You see that Elijah didn't have anointing. In anointing was enough to part River Jordan, after he passed through Jericho in, on his way to the exit. Of course, there was anointing. Then why? Well, my brother, don't ask me why. When you get to heaven, ask God that why did Jericho remain in their problem, even though Elijah passed through the place, even on his exit? Those are questions that, you know, when we get to heaven, we have a lot of stories. We'll be able to ask God, why this? Why that? Why that? The ones who don't have the clarity in the scriptures, we have all eternity to be asking God and to be getting answers and still increasing our knowledge and insight. But for now, we stay with what the scripture says. Was it that these people did not ask Elijah for any help? It's possible. You know what the Bible says? You have not because you ask not. If they didn't ask, Elijah might not have done anything. So is it because they didn't ask? The Bible didn't say so, but that's a possible reason. Because if they don't ask, they're not going to get. The Bible says, ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, the door will be opened unto you. What happens if you don't ask, you don't receive. What happens if you don't seek, you don't find. What happens if you don't knock, no door is opened unto you. So. Is it that these people, was it that they did not ask Elijah? Possible. Was it that, you know, a task that God scheduled for the next season? That's also possible. You say, but why? 
David wanted to build the temple. Is it not good to build temple? Yes, sir. Is it not good to worship God? Yes, sir. But God told David, stop. You are old season. I don't want you to build the temple for me. You can, you can make provision for all the materials. Your son that will reign after you, he will build that temple. Divine choice. And Solomon eventually built the temple. Even though Moses provided all the, I mean, even though David provided all the materials for the temple. So is it that God wanted that this problem will be solved by Elijah? I mean, Elisha. Okay, Elijah might leave the power be behind, the resources behind for Elisha to solve the problem. Just like David left the materials behind, the resources behind for Solomon to build the temple. It's a possibility. When we get to heaven, we'll be knowing whether that's, that's the reason. Whether they didn't ask, we know. Whether it's just that God decided, all right, Elijah had done enough, let him go. Elisha will continue. It's possible. But what I'm saying is that by just looking at all these possibilities, so was it a task that God scheduled for the next season? It's possible. The building of the temple was divinely scheduled for, for the next king, <coughs> Solomon. God says, David, don't build the temple for me. You've been a man of war. You have shed too much blood. My house is not a house of war. I'm a God, a God of peace. You don't represent me. You have fought too many battles. You have shed too much blood. 40 years of fighting. But do you know that Solomon never fought a single battle? 40 years of Solomon's reign was a reign of peace. God said, your son will build that house for me because his reign will signify and is more resonant with who I am, the God of all peace. God's choice. There's nothing David could have done about that. God said this project for the next season, not for now. So was Jericho a project for the next season? We don't know, but it's possible. Amen. Amen. So we may never know what were the main reasons behind the events that transpired at Jericho. However, the grim fact was that the problem of Jericho had not been tackled in the old season. That's, that, that's the bottom line. The old season had come and gone, and their problem remained. Just like the people in Jeremiah chapter 8 that cried and said, the harvest is past, the summer is ended, we are not saved. Time has come and gone and left us in our dilemma. Here, the problem was not solved in the old season. Maybe 2021 can represent the old season. In 2021, many of your problems were not solved. And now we have come into 2022. I pray that 2022 will be a new season for you. Amen. A new season of solution. Amen. A new season of victory and dominion. Amen. A new season of help and support. Amen. A new season of provision and progress. Amen. Amen. Don't worry about the old season. The old season has gone. What can you do about it? The old season has come. It has gone. It left you in your situation. But look towards the new season. Look at what you can get in the new season. Look at the change that can occur in the new season. That's important. So Jericho's problem remained in the, I mean, old season came and gone, has come and gone, and they remain. Elisha had received the double portion of Elisha's, of Elijah's anointing. Jericho was Elijah's last visit during the old season. And it was Elisha's first visit in the new season. Is it a coincidence? I don't think so. The last place that Elijah went before he left was Jericho. 
He left them in their problem. But the first place that Elisha visited after receiving the double portion was Jericho. And he solved that problem. The anointing to solve the problem from Elijah to Elisha. And Elisha solved the problem. Resources were made available and the new person was able to implement a solution. You know, sometimes that's what happens. That's what happens. Sometimes a pastor has been pastoring a particular place. Maybe for one reason or the other, not enough wisdom, not enough skill, not enough strategy, but he's a good manager and then is able to provide his resources. He saves money, he puts there, everything is so, but the church is not making as much progress. Then you bring another pastor that is able in a new season, has strategy, has wisdom. We can't write off the old pastor completely. Thank God for the provision of the resources. Thank God for managing the resources and saving it. Even when he doesn't know how to maybe deploy it for progress, somebody else now comes in the new season, takes that resource that has been provided in the old season and uses it to transform the church in the new season. Both of them, they have their benefit. David may not build the temple, but he made available the materials. Solomon didn't make available materials, but he was able to build the temple. Both of them, they have their, you know, their share in the blessings of God. Elijah was able to make a provision for Elisha to receive the double portion. Elisha now came, used the double portion to provide you know, the solution to the problem. And that's what we should be doing. You know what Jesus Christ said? I sent you to go and read, John chapter four, in the fields in which you have not labored. Other men labored, but you have entered into their harvest. harvest. Oh, somebody else planted in the old season. But now is the time of harvest. And you come in and you are harvesting. And sometimes, you know, the people that don't understand the scriptures, they will write off the old people. They didn't do anything. What were they doing? Look at how right this field is. Look at how we are harvesting. We have just come here six months from scratch. We have built a church of 500. Some people have prayed. Some people have broken, you know, the bondages. Some people have bound the principalities and powers in that place. Some people have done a lot of evangelism and seed sowing, but they couldn't reap the harvest. They put in a lot of effort. Now you come in and then you are reaping the harvest. Don't write them off. <laughs> It's good to be wise. Don't write them off. If they've not broken the you know, territorial powers, you will not be having the success you are having. If they've not evangelized to sow seed in the heart of people, the seed that they couldn't reap, but now is the time that the seed is germinating, you will not be reaping any harvest. If they've not done a lot of work that they've done, so we should give credit to the people in the old season, what they did, Jesus said, I sent you into the fields that you did not sow. Other men have sowed. You have entered into their labors. Jesus was saying, the people that went before you, they did something. They didn't reap the harvest, but they did something. The harvest you are reaping is part of the effort they've put in. I pray they all, I mean, God will help us to understand that we should never write off the old season altogether. The old season has its place. The new season has its place. We are in the new season, but the new season is the New Testament. How do you want to understand the New Testament without the Old Testament? How do you want to understand Hebrews without Leviticus? How do you want to understand Ephesians without Joshua? How do you want to understand some mysteries of the New Testament without the revelation of the Old Testament? You can't. You might try. You can't. So it's important. The old season. There are benefits. The new season, there are greater benefits because it's a new season with a new anointing and a new arrival in that season. 
And we are those people that are beneficiaries because we are living in the new season. And I pray the Lord himself will help you in Jesus' name. Amen. The people of Jericho, you, you can see in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 19. And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord said, but the water is not, it's poison, and the ground barren. They say, we thank God for the new anointing upon your life. But before you leave our city, we have a request. Say, what request? As you can see, this city looks beautiful. It's a city of palm trees. It looks pleasant. But our situation is not pleasant at all. Water is poisoned. Land is barren. We are suffering, you know, the ravages of this. Please solve the problem. They requested. And what, that's what I'm saying. Maybe they didn't request this, you know, when Elijah was around. Say, don't bother the prophet. This is his last day. Let him enjoy his last day and go to heaven. And then you stay in your problem. Why don't you trouble him a bit? Because he's going to go and rest forever. So if we trouble him for the next two hours, say it will be over. Because anyway, he's going to be he's going to the place of rest to go and rest forever. So we might as well trouble him, you know, for, for the time. Maybe they were too that no, 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 no. Let, let, let the prophet enjoy his last moment and then be relaxed. And then he went, you stayed in your problem. But thank God they came to Elijah. We have a problem. Don't keep your problem to yourself. An anointed pastor is by your side. Tell him, let him pray for you. That's important. God has put a leader over you. He can pray for you. He can fast over your situation. He can, he can you know, be able to tell you that maybe this is the root of the problem. Let's solve it this way. Don't keep it to yourself. If they have kept their problem to themselves, Elijah would just, I mean, Elijah would just have greeted them and went his way. They remain in their problem. They requested. And they told him, don't be deceived by the, you know, outward appearance of our city. The situation of the city looks very pleasant, but the situation is deeper than that. We are not, we look physically pleasant, but inside we are dying. I know there are people that are like that. If you look at, you know, very cheerful face, you know, easy going life, but inside, the struggles are many. The pain is deep. Why don't you talk? Why don't you request? Why don't you request for prayer? Why don't you request for help? Like the people of Jericho requested for help and they got that help. When you request for help, you will get the help in Jesus' name. Amen. Ask and you shall receive. That's what the Bible says. You have not because you ask not. That's what the Bible says. So they asked. The people of Jericho, they specifically requested for help and they got it because in verse 20, and he said, bring me a new vest, a new cruise and put salt therein. And they brought it to him. You know, another thing you learn from there, Many times people think that miracle is magic. No. Miracle is a divine human partnership. You are still going to have a part to play in that miracle. Say, no, I thought that it's God that does miracle. Yes, God does miracle. But you have a part to play even in God doing the miracle. Say, Pastor, what do you mean? God wants to multiply oil for you but you will go and borrow the vessels, not a few. God will not do that for you. You will clean the vessels and bring them to your house. God will not do that for you. You are going to take the oil and be pouring. And then when one vessel is full, you set it apart. God will not do that for you. God will multiply the oil, but all the other mechanisms that have to do in order to, to make sure the reality of the miracle, you will have to do. Here, Elisha was going to help them. But he said, bring me a new cruise. We don't have, 
then you are not ready for miracle. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh, bring me a new cruise and put salt therein. What did they do? Verse 20. And he said, bring me a new cruise and put salt therein. And they brought it to him. This is what is going to use in creating the miracle. They brought it. Jesus is going to multiply water, I mean, turn water into wine. They, some, some people have to go and fetch that water and put it into the barrel. The water itself will not be created by a miracle. You have to go, fetch the water, put it inside. Is it clear? You yes, know, sometimes we, we think that miracle just comes from heaven. Yes, it comes from heaven. But there are parts you will need to do in that miracle even though God is going to do it. Jesus will turn the water into wine, but you have to go and fetch that water and put it into the barrel before you will turn it into water. Elisha is going to do the miracle and make sure that this and that, but he said, bring me a new cruise and put salt inside. And they did. There are always parts. Naaman is going to be healed, but God will not jump and dip himself into the water for him. That's his own part. In getting the miracle done, miracle is always a divine human partnership. We need to understand that it is not magic that just comes from the blue. And there are times that we have hindered the miracles of God in our life because the things we need to do as part of making the miracle a reality, we are not doing. Bring me a new cruise and put salt therein. If you don't do it, Elisha can't do anything. He knows what to do, yes. He has received inspiration that this is what to do, yes. But without the resources, how can he do? But thank God these people, they brought it. So what did he do? In verse 21, and he went forth unto the spring of the waters and cast the salt in there and said, thus said the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. The water was the source of both the poison on, in the water and the barrenness of the land. You know that when, it, I mean, so eventually when the waters was killed, also the land becomes okay because that's what waters the land to make it either productive or barren. Verse 22, so the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha, which is faith. So God told him what to do, but the people had their part to do. The people had their part to do. God can multiply the oil, but you supply the oil. God can multiply the flower, you know, of the widow of Zarephan, or you supply the flour to be multiplied. Jesus can multiply bread to feed the thousand, or you supply the five loaves of bread and two fishes. Miracle is a divine human partnership, and you need to understand that. What miracle are you expecting from God? The question is, what part does God expect you to play in that miracle? What is your part in that miracle? Very, very important. And that's what happened over here. So the people asked Elisha, help us, and they got the help. What a perfect match. A new anointing for a new season. The scribes and the Pharisees, they are taught in a certain way. But when Jesus, with a new anointing in a new season, taught, the people looked at him and said, this one is teaching as one that has authority. It's not teaching like the scribe and the Pharisees. You know why? They've experienced teaching in the old season. And they're experiencing teaching in the new season. And they said there is a world of difference between the teaching in the old season and the teaching in the new season. And they were saying that. And we need to understand that. Teaching in the old season, teaching in the new season, Never man spake like this man. This one spoke as one that had authority. He's not speaking like the one, you know, like the scribes. Very, very important. Old season, 
a new season. Very important. Let, let's go on. You find <clears throat> many people have tried to rebuild the broken walls of Jerusalem in the old season. If you read the book of Ezra, some people have tried, you know, to rebuild Jerusalem. They couldn't do it. The enemy would just scatter them. Some of them were just discouraged and everything fizzled out. So many people have tried to rebuild the broken walls of Jerusalem in the old season without success. However, Nehemiah with a new anointing in the new season, he got the job done in 52 days. Showed me when a new person, a new arrival with a new anointing in a new season, what some people have not been able to do in years, they get it done. You know, let me give you this example. One of the missionaries, the CMS missionaries in Nigeria, you know what he said? They were there laboring and laboring and laboring and laboring and laboring before they would get a convert. Years will go to break through, especially in the Yoruba culture, to be able to break through, through the darkness, the darkness of occultism, the darkness of dark powers. It was very difficult for them. And one missionary said, what we have not been able to do in 60 years, Ayobabalola did in 60 days. When revival broke out in Okeoe, and people were turning to the Lord, and compassion was, up, was happening. This missionary, white missionary said, what we have not been able to do in 60 years, Ayobabalola did in 60 days. That's what happens when a new season comes with a new arrival, with a new anointing. What other people have not been able to do in other generations, you begin to do it. What has not been possible in the old season becomes suddenly possible in the new season. What are taking them decades to achieve in the old season we begin to achieve the same thing in weeks in the new season. And I believe that our new season has come. Amen. I said I believe our new season has come. Amen. I'm telling you what we have not been able to achieve in this church in the last 25 years. It came 1995. This is 2022, 27 years. We have labored. We have done this. And it's been a struggle. I'm telling you, what we are going to achieve by the grace of God in the next five years will more than will, will be more than what we have achieved in the last 27 years. And people will be saying, what is happening? A new arrival, a new season, a new anointing. That's the that's what normally happens. And it's going to happen. I pray you will be part of it. Amen. That you will not run away to somewhere. Amen. You, you want to see it happening in your time. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you want to be a partaker and be part of that great move of God to say that this is happening in our time. And then the people who are in the old season that have gone away say, I had, yes. When Naomi hears that God has visited his people, he begins to come back from Moab. I said, let me go back to Bethlehem Judah. That's the Bethlehem Judah that around, she ran away from together with the husband. But now a new season had come, a new visitation of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And because of that, she had to come back, to come and witness what was happening. I'm telling you, we are entering into a new season. Wow. A new season of victory. Amen. A new season of dominion, a Amen. new season of progress, a new Amen. season of accomplishment, a Amen. new season of progress. And so will it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Very, very important. You know, it's always a perfect match. A new arrival, a new anointing, a new season. Wow. It will surprise you the outcomes, great outcomes. Prophets, you know, I mean, Potiphar had had many servants and, super, and supervisors in his house without any significant difference. <laughs> but when 
a Joseph with a new anointing in a new season shows up in the house of Potiphar. The difference is noticeable. The Bible says that God blessed Potiphar's house for Joseph's sake. Even that man knew. Laban had been working for so many years without any progress. But when Jacob came, you know what Laban said? Laban said, I have learned by experience that God has blessed me since your coming for your sake. Even Laban, Laban was Jacob's uncle. He had been laboring for years. But what he got when, when Jacob came, he was enriched. And he told Jacob, I have learned by experience. Laban telling Joseph, J Jacob, said, I have learned by experience that since your coming, God has blessed me a lot. When a new arrival with a new anointing lands in a new season, there must be new progress. Amen. There must be a change. Amen. It may be in a family. It may be in a community. It may be in a school. It may be when it happens, that's what is going to happen. Every single time. And you can be that new arrival. Amen. There's going to make a change. Amen. Nehemiah was the new arrival with the new anointing in his own new season. Joseph was a new arrival with a new anointing in his own new season in Potiphar's house. Nehemiah was a new arrival with a new anointing in the new season in which the walls of Jerusalem were built. Those people, when they come, things must move. They are movers. They are shakers. Things cannot remain the same. No, there must be progress. Show me a new arrival with a new anointing in a new season that lands in a local church. There must be progress in that local church. Attendance will increase. Resources will increase. Life will be impacted. Things will happen. And I'm praying that in your territory, you will be that new arrival with a new anointing in the new season in Jesus' name. Amen. Very, very important. You know, when a Joseph with a new anointing and wisdom, when he lands in a new season in Egypt's affairs, the nation is preserved from oncoming peril. Egypt would have suffered. But Pharaoh said, there is nobody like the wisdom you have. You are the only one that has been able to interpret the dream. And you know what is coming. We are going to appoint you also. You will be the one to help us implement strategies to make sure that the dream, the way we saw it, did not happen. And he did. He made a difference. New arrival on the Egypt scene with a new anointing, with a new insight, with a new strategy, with God's wisdom. Things must happen. You know, you want to pray and say, God, anywhere I get to, make me a new arrival with a new anointing in the new season so that things begin to happen. And it will happen in Jesus' name. Amen. New anointing for a new season. You know, even for the students that are on the platform, it can happen, a new anointing for a new season. If you remember, the other time, Toba came and was sharing with you that he was scoring 23% in maths. It was difficult for him. But when a kind of a new anointing for maths came upon his life in a new season, we did a test one day and he got 83% or so. And from that day, he never looked back. And he always wanted to get better, better, better. And he told you that that's how I learned math, from 23 to 83. But that new season came and he never looked back. And as you are watching also, your new season can come. You, you can tell God and say, oh God, tonight, tonight I'm entering a new season, a new anointing and understanding for my books that I'm not going to look back at all. And eventually things, my grades will be transformed. 
My understanding will increase. Progress will be made in my academics. There is a, you know, a kind of a, a paradigm shift, a kind of a shift. That's what happens. Jericho's problem was not solved over years. It was instant, a shift from problem to solution, instant. Water was not turned into wine over a, a long period. It was a shift. God can do the same thing for you. A shift in your understanding, a shift in, the, in your level of wisdom, a shift in your insight. All of a sudden, in the old season, you read, you don't have insight. You read, you don't understand. In the new season, you read and you have 10 insights. You have 15 insights. And everywhere you look, you are just seeing points. You are just seeing, that's what can happen. And you can pray for that. I say, God, my new season has come. I want to be a new arrival with a new anointing in my new season. And the Lord himself, he will do it in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah. Number two, no good arrival in a new season. What makes a new season different from the old season? It's not just the time. You know, when we come into a new year, like January 1, people say, Happy New Year. If it's only because we have moved from the old January, February, March of 2021 into the new January, uh, February, and March of 2022, if that is the only thing that makes the year new, then what is the difference? If you remain in your problem, what is the difference in the new year? If you remain in your challenges, what is the, the difference in the new year? It must not be the time alone that makes the new season a new season. There must be something significant, new, in the new season that makes it to be new. So never make it just on the time. What sets it apart? There is no excitement or profit when the new season is only different from the old season in time. January 2020, we are no, I'm no longer in January 2021, I'm 21, we are now in January 2022. Thank God for the new January. But if that is the old thing, then what? It doesn't make any difference. So it must not be time alone. New season should be different from the old season because of new opportunities. Must be different from the old season because of new possibilities. Must be different from the old season because of possibilities of new orientation and new direction. As a student, in the old season, you are not serious. In the old season, you are not disciplined. In the old season, you play what Italians call scapatoio. But in the new season, a new season of discipline, a new season of focus, a new season of hard work, a new season of concentration, your grades will improve. There must be what separates the old season from the new season. It's not just time, not just that yesterday and today. And then we say yesterday was old season, today is a new season. If there is no difference between yesterday and today, what is the point of the new season? So it must not just be separation in time. But you are looking at new opportunities. You are looking at new possibilities, new orientation, new direction, a new discipline, a new focus, a new mentality, a new mindset. Things are new that will bring increase and progress. However, a new season could be different from the old season because of the arrival of a change agent, a game changer. Elisha was a game changer in the new season in Jericho. And when an Elisha comes into Jericho, Jericho will never be the same. Jericho can never remain in its problems. When Ayobabalola, you know, arrived on the scene of Elisha in Okoye, and from there to all the parts of the Western region, there was a change. He was a game changer. He was a, he was, you know, he was an, a change agent. Demons were running away. People were getting free. Deliverances were there. People were getting saved. People knew what it meant to be saved. People were getting revelations. God was ministering to people because one change agent came. 
and it was glorious. In your generation, you can be that change agent. Amen. That game changer. Amen. And it will happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Elijah the prophet was a noble arrival on the Jericho landscape. He changed the situation of Jericho forever. Forever. He changed the situation of Jericho forever. When change agents and game changers, when they arrive on the scene, things never remain the same. Progress will be made. Expansion will be experienced. Breakthrough will be experienced. Deliverance will happen. These are always the outcomes of such noble arrivals. Joseph arrives in the house of Potiphar. There must be a noticeable change. Moses arrives in the, in the, in the midst of Israel. 430 years of slavery must come to an end. Exodus must happen. When the Joshua comes on the scene, we will cross River Jordan. We will march around the Jericho walls, they will crumble. We're going to march into our inheritance, subdue the enemy, and divide the land. These are change agents. These are noble arrivals in a new season. That's what happens every single time. When the Samuel, you know, when Samuel came, the Bible says there was no open vision. God had not been speaking to Israel for many years. But when Samuel came, God began to speak to Israel. God called him Samuel, Samuel. And God showed him what God wanted to do to Eli, that God could not talk, talk to Eli, God told Samuel. Visions began to come. God began to give Samuel the vision of what Israel was going to be. God began to speak. This time tomorrow, I will send you somebody who are going to be a king. Israel during that time had not been hearing anything. Everything was dead. You can read it. First Samuel chapter 2. So first Samuel chapter 3, there was no open vision. But when a change agent, when a new arrival with a new anointing comes, there will be vision. There will be dreams. There will be strategy. There will be insight. There will be progress. There will be dominion. There will be victory. There will be deliverance. Amen. No man. That's what happens. Every single time. In the old season, Goliath has been intimidating everybody and nobody could act. When an anointed David, anointed in 1 Samuel chapter 16, and then it arrives in 1 Samuel chapter 17, in a new season, a new arrival with a new anointing in the new season. Goliath was dying. Mm -hmm. Goliath cannot survive. The enemy must be subdued. The enemy must be wiped out. Bondages must be broken. Must, must be, you know, must be procured. Because a new arrival with a new anointing in a new season, ah, things never remain the same. Amen. And I can see you on the platform. A new arrival. Amen. With a new anointing. Amen. In this our new season. Amen. Things must change. Amen. In your life, things must change. Amen. In your family, things must change. Amen. In the local church, things must change. Amen. In our school, things must change. Amen. Because of you. Amen. A game changer, a change agent. Very, very important. You know what the Bible says, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Before, before that time, it was not happening. John the Baptist represented the whole season. You know what the Bible says? John did no miracle. <laughs> but Jesus came represented the new arrival with a new anointing in the new season. He went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Miracles everywhere, deliverance is everywhere, dead rising, the lame walking, the deaf hearing, the blind seeing. In fact, when John the Baptist sent to him and said, 
Are you the one that should come or should we look for another? You know Jesus' answer. Say, go and tell John what you see. Lepers are cleansed. The lame, they are walking. The deaf, they are hearing. The blind, they are seeing. The dead are raised up. The poor have the gospel preached unto them. Go and tell John that. Those are the signs of the new arrival with the new anointing. Show me any new arrival with a new anointing, a new season. That territory must experience a change. That territory must experience progress. That territory must experience completely different. You know, and that was my attitude and my understanding when I came in 1995 to Italy and I was sent. I saw myself as a game changer. I saw myself as a change agent. I saw myself as a new arrival with a new anointing. The situation of the church was so bad when I came. We were owing money, we can't pay this, we can't pay rent, you know, everything was. But look by God's grace what has happened over the last 27 years. But I'm telling you, these last 27 years, let's count it now as old season. From tonight, we are entering a new season. Amen. And you are going to see new progress. Amen. New victories. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And you can be part of that move of God. New arrival with a new anointing in a new season. Things will change. Amen. And the question I'm asking you is, are you a change agent? Are you a game changer? Are you going to be like Nehemiah? Are you going to be like Jacob? Are you going to be like Joseph? Are you going to be like Moses? When these people arrive on the scene, are you going to be like a Joshua? Things never remain the same. The status quo can never survive. When they come, anything that needs to be shaken out will be shaken out. Progress Amen. must be made. My brother will send you to a place, go and pastor that church, and the church remains the same for five years. What kind of a pastor are you? You are sent to be a game changer, to be a change agent. Pray until God anoints you to be a new arrival with a new anointing in the new season, and the local church will experience a change, a shift. Very important. Number three, new accomplishments in the new season. What are we talking about? With the new anointing in the new season, with the noble arrival in the new season, there must be new accomplishments in the new season. It's, it's normal. Jericho experienced a new season loaded with benefits. Water was healed, the land was healed, the pleasant situation of the of, of the of the city, you no, know, the outlook, city of palm trees is no longer now just physically looking beautiful, but also even deep within, everything has been revived and everything is healthy. Moses represented the old season, you know, Israel under Joshua experienced new accomplishments in their new season under Joshua. River Jordan parted as they walked through the impossible. Jericho was crumbled as they marched you know, into their inheritance. John the Baptist represented the end of the old season of the law and the prophets. Jesus represented the beginning of a new season of grace because law came through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus. But you could see the manifestation of power, manifestation of anointing, insight into the scriptures, revelations of wisdom that he was given. Never now spake like this. Yes, a new season. When you have a new season, there'll be new insights. There'll be new revelation. There'll be fresh angles to all truth. That's what will be happening. There will be new accomplishments in, in this season of grace, freedom, liberty, deliverance. When you look at all the heroes of faith that the Bible talked about in Hebrews chapter 11, 
Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, David, Jacob, Joseph, you know, Isaac. And the Bible talked about Elisha, Elijah. These heroes of faith represented the old season of the manifestation of faith. Jesus represents the new season of the manifestation of faith. And the Bible says is the author and the finisher of our faith. And tonight, my brother, I'm looking at you and I'm telling you, this is your new season of victory. Amen. My sister, I'm telling you, this is your new season of abundance and, and, and deliverance. Amen. That family that has been struggling. You said, Pastor, if you knew what my family went through in 2021, oh, Pastor, you will shed tears for me. My sister, I came here to celebrate for you. Because we are in 2022, a new season of uplifting, a new season of joy, a new season of conquest, a new season of help, a new season of favor, a new season of, you know, support from heaven for you and your family in Jesus' name. Amen. A new season in Jericho. If Jericho can experience a new season, how about you? Tonight, I can see somebody experiencing a new season. Amen. Elisha arrived at Jericho, and things never remained the same in Jericho. You know, I remember many years ago, I decided to go to um, around Russia. And there was an anointing on my life. I can't, I can't forget that night. And I preached a particular message. And the way I prayed that night, do you know it, be, it was not even in the church. The brethren met in somebody's house. But that night, there was a particular family They've been looking for a child for so many years. That night was their night of breakthrough. Yeah. But when that child was conceived and was born, the child was called Miracle. Some of you that are in Russia, you will understand. That was a night of breakthrough. It was a new season. That child was conceived. No, it's important. And the parents can trace it to that night. And I'm praying that tonight is your new season. Amen. A new season of breakthrough. Amen. A new season of dominion. Amen. I don't care what you have gone through before. Let tonight be a new season for you. A new season that you are going to experience a change. A new Amen. season when your troubles are over. A new season when your struggles are over. A new Amen. season when the barren land, you know, becomes productive. A new season when the poison water becomes healed. A new season when all your frustrations are turned into fulfillment. A new season when bondages are broken, yoke is broken, progress is made, increase Amen. comes to your life, help and favor you receive. Amen. Rise up and pray and say, tonight, oh God, a new season in my life, a new season in my family, a new season in my academics, a new season in everything that surrounds me. A new season in my life and family, in the name of Jesus, a new season in everything that surrounds me, in Jesus' name, a new season for me and my household, in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, this is my season, a new season, a new season, oh Lord. Of opportunities for me, open doors for me and my household in the name of Jesus. A new season, oh Lord God in heaven of prosperity in Jesus' name. Explosion of progress, oh Lord God in the name of Jesus. Expansion in every areas of my life and family in Jesus' name. Lord, tonight is a new season of breakthrough and deliverance for me and my household in Jesus' name. Father Almighty God, it is a new season. 
season, Lord, in heaven. New opportunities, Lord, God, in heaven. Just tell the Lord, this is a, a new season for you. A new season to be given. A new season of achievement. A new season of progress. A new season of insight. A new season of deliverance. A new season of dominion. A new season of breakthrough. A new season of freedom. A new season of liberty. The liberty in the name of Jesus. Free from the shackles of the wickedness in Jesus' name. A new season. A new season in your life. A new season in your family. A new season in business, a new season in academics, a new season in the things you put your hands to do, a new season. A new season of breakthrough and open doors for you. Based on the right and left, people in front and people following you, goodness and mercy following you. you are breaking forth on the right and breaking forth on the left. A new season. A new season of opportunities and possibilities. Opportunities in the name of Jesus. A season of all Lord breakthrough. A season, oh Lord, of great opportunities in the name of Jesus. Open doors for us in Jesus' name. A new season of deliverance in the name of Jesus. Of opportunities, oh Lord. Possibilities, oh Lord. Impossible possibilities becoming possible for me and my house in Jesus name oh Lord a new season oh my father my God oh favor favor from heaven beyond our labor in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth in all that pertain to life and godliness father you reach out unto us in Jesus name a new season of joy oh Lord of conquest oh Lord of uplifting you uplift me and my household spiritually you uplift us academically Lord you uplift us, oh God. Financially, you uplift us in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, oh God, joy, victory, satisfaction in the name of Jesus. A new season for me and my family. In Jesus, the Lord, you lay your hands upon us. A new season of deliverance as you delivered David out of the hand of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare from tonight onwards, I declare it a new season for your people. Amen. A new season of liberty and freedom. Amen. A new season of deliverance and dominion. Amen. A new season of provision and progress. Amen. A new season of insight and knowledge. Amen. A new season of opportunities and possibilities. Amen. A new season of new direction in the name of Jesus. Amen. A new season of mercy and favor in the name of Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you have done for us in the old season. But we are stepping in into a new level. Amen. Stepping in into your abundance. Amen. Stepping in onto a new level of progress. We're stepping Amen. in onto a new level of accomplishment. Us, you have brought us into the, into the new season. Every individual in this church, every child, every adult, every family, every local church will experience the blessings of the new season in Jesus' name. Amen. The whole season spoke of barrenness. The new season will speak of fruitfulness. Amen. The spoke of frustration. The new season will speak of fulfillment. The whole season spoke of poisonous and barrenness, but the new season will speak of health and progress in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, I pray that every one of your people here tonight, you will make them a new arrival with a new anointing in the new Amen. season. Amen. When we become new arrivals with new anointing in the new season, Amen. it never remain the same. Amen. In Potiphar's house, things cannot remain the same. In Labor's house, Things cannot be remain the same. Yeah. Jerusalem, I mean, the temple, I mean, the, 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 the broken walls will be built in record time. Amen. Progress is always made. When the Moses comes to a nation that has been in captivity for 430 years and they cannot get out, when the Moses comes, Exodus must, must happen. Amen. Oh Lord, I pray. 
everybody on the platform tonight, make them new arrivals with new anointing in the new season, experiencing new accomplishments in Jesus' name. Oh. Let the power of the Lord of hosts, I, I mean, execute that which we have declared in Jesus' name. Oh, oh. Lord, I pray for students in this school, those who have been struggling, struggling with maths, struggling with chemistry, struggling with physics, struggling with economics, struggling with geography, reading without understanding. I declare unto you tonight a new season, Amen. a new season of understanding, Amen. a new season of progress, Amen. a new season of better grades, Amen. a new season in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. When you sit down to study, you will understand. Amen. When you sit down to, to be able to prepare for exams, your preparation will be thorough and profitable in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh God, I declare a shift, a change, a kind of a dynamic change in their life in Jesus' name. Amen. That even people that have known them before, they will say, well, I used to know you. You used to be 30, 30, 35 students. How come you have moved to 70, 75? Oh Lord, do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Anything that is contrary to progress in their life, I come tonight by the anointing of my life. I break it in Jesus' name. Oh, Any oh, barrier man. to academic progress, they are canceled in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Oh, I release you into your progress. I release you into excellence. I release you to go and perform excellently and make progress in Jesus' name. Okay. Heavenly Father, I pray that in the families will begin to experience new opportunities, Amen. new possibilities, Amen. progress, insight, Amen. mercy, favor, Amen. oh Lord, health, everything we need, abundance, it will be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Not even in our churches, a new season. Amen. A new season of abundant resources. Amen. A new season of souls flocking into the kingdom. Amen. A new season of program, a new season of infrastructures, you know, coming right, left, and center, and the church moving forward dynamically in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. Amen. And so will it be in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Go and enjoy your new season. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Let me hear another amen. Amen.